Cool. Hey, everybody. My name is David. Uh, I'm the Global Engineering Principal at EdgeCan, and for the most part, I've got about 15 minutes here. So 15 minutes isn't a long time. So I'm going to break it up into three parts. One, a little story about the industry and about the general direction that it's going. This is a new part, and from talking to people today, I decided to include it in and get rid of some of the other stuff that's in it. It's a bit sales pitchy, but I got 15 minutes, so I'm going to be pretty tight on it. So EASM, RBVA, or RBVM, and PTAS. So that's where we'll start off anyway. So the three of them and how they fit together, uh, everything starts with EASM. Everything starts with discovery. Everything starts with crawling, enumeration, OSINT-style discovery when it comes to just finding out what you got on the internet. And, that, and that's We've been doing EASM since about 2015, but we've changed it to ASM and now to EASM, and it's just the exact same thing. It's finding out what you got on the internet that somebody can use against you in some shape or form. And what we're finding is a lot of organizations already have some sort of solution in place. And it's usually pre-canned or pre-baked internally, as opposed to they went to a vendor and spent 200 grand on Risk IQ or whatever. Uh, are doing their own thing, and they know how what to look out for, they know what they don't want to expose to the internet. So that's where we like to start. And then once we get EASM up and going, we start moving into the traditional vulnerability scanning. So traditional vulnerability scanning, we, there's a million names for it. VM, the middle tree here, I usually bundle into VM. That's just vulnerability management. You're doing vulnerability testing. You're, it's DAST, it's microservice, it's API, it's any type of this type of enumerating a vulnerability that we've known about or we can take a pretty good guess at. And this is just vulnerability scanning. That's all it is. And people are using a smorgasbord of solutions for vulnerability scanning. And vulnerability scanning is important. It's super important. Uh, we're not at the point now where we can find all vulnerabilities. Uh, when a developer introduces them into code, so we, we need to find them proactively afterwards, after they've been introduced, after they've lived for a few years and had updates and uh, migrations and all these different types of things. So it's, it's very interesting, but people aren't doing these correctly. So it was a funny, someone asked earlier about uh, what do you do about zero days? And then was, someone else said, well, you can't even fix vulnerabilities that have existed for 20 years on your technology, why are you worrying about vulnerabilities that people are spending a million euro each to try exploit really targeted users? Focus on the basics, focus on the simple things. And it kind of chimes back a little bit to something John said a few minutes ago about compliance being so important. It, it, it allows people to revert back to the norm of checklist style security. And it just allows people to tick boxes and see how other people are doing from it and learn from it. But that's, look, that's a different segue. And I've, only got about nine minutes left, so. <laughs> uh, then we move into pen testing as a service. So first thing we do is we find stuff that you have. Second thing, and the tree here is, we start just doing automated vulnerability scanning on them. And the third piece is PTAS at the end, pen testing as a service. You'll have some really important things. And these are the things that your customers are going to go, are you doing pen testing on these? And then so you can incorporate all of these into one platform. So the the world is changing a lot in the vulnerability detection world, or whatever way we want to describe the security world. And people are starting to utilize things like AI. People are starting to, ha they, I hope they've already started using ML and things like that. And it's just, it's starting to build up pace rapidly about how we can start utilizing these technologies. And I suppose one of the things that's unfortunate is that uh, <laughs> the human element isn't going to go away anytime soon. So what we need to do is we need to take the human effort that we have available as a resource today, and we need to be really targeted about how they get to be used. So that's, why, that's how we think of pen testing. So when a pen tester sits down to perform a pen test, they've got a few months worth of results, ideally. Uh, a few months worth of automated scanning, worth of enumeration, all of this. So when they sit down, they can actually just really focus on the business logic of the stuff that they're looking at, because that's where really juicy vulnerabilities are discovered. So a little bit then on just why EdgeCan exists, I think is a, a good way to look at it. 
Everything we do is, we're, we're all about removing noise. We're all about verifying vulnerabilities before they get to our customers. And the way we think about it is vulnerabilities need to be verified somewhere. And it, it can either be you doing it or we can do it. And we found that we've got to a point where we've a hundred, hundreds of millions uh, of false positive vulnerabilities and we can start, we have started incorporating the likes of ML. So we get a, a, a certainty back when we see a vulnerability. So we can be like, well, look, there's 99.9% .9 chance this is not an actual live vulnerability for you guys. So all of a sudden it doesn't even make it into your dashboard. So you can just really focus on the things that can help your teams and just stop people going on wild goose chases, which is hyper important. Then we move into risk-based results. So I've got about three of these, so we'll get through them fairly quickly. Risk-based results. We don't know what is your most important asset. We don't know that, but we need to get that information out of you in order to be able to give you a proper risk-based approach to anything at all. We just, everything looks the same to me. We're, we're technology agnostic. We don't care what it is. If you turn around and say, well, this is our highest priority piece of technology, then we can look at it slightly differently. So we need to give you information so that you can make a decision. But you need to tell us what's really important as well. So it's really an exchange of information that helps you prioritize your information as well. And we can cross-reference data by things like EPSS scoring, uh, CISA Kev, which probably should be the first thing everybody looks at. Is it on the CISA Kev list, the known exploitable vulnerabilities list? And then you can start looking at other reference points. Is it public or private? Uh, even CVSS scoring, still there's a space in the world for it in the short term anyway. And what we do is then we have a human eyeball these results as well. So they'll say, well, look, actually, the context here is not taken into account with this automated scoring. We need to mo move this vulnerability up because the data that it's pushing back, it just looks like JSON gibberish, but it turns out it's actually just a list of users and it's all the information that we need. And all of that is taken into account when we, preside, when we present vulnerability data to people. So moving into some of the data that we've gathered. So we've got like hundreds of millions of false positive vulnerability data points. And these have, ex this is years and years and years of gathering this type of data millions of scans now at this stage, as well as triaging these scans, going through the results at the end, and then categorizing them. So kind of training the, the, the ML style model here. But we've started to be able to use this data with accuracy, which has been one of the biggest, biggest challenges that we've had in a long time. Uh, we, we weren't able to make good decisions with the data, and now we've got to the point where we can actually use the, the data to help us make decisions. And it's just it's a really positive space. So we've got millions and millions of vulnerabilities that are real, and we can cross-reference every vulnerability we find through that data, as well as the false positive data. So it just allows people to be really quick in understanding if something is a serious risk or if it's not a serious risk. So it's, it's super important. I'm not gonna talk too much more on this stuff. There's a bit of a, yeah, automation. This, uh, this is one of our, most important tenants in EdgeCan. So it, nearly everybody's an engineer in EdgeCan. So we're, we're only catching up on the marketing stuff, but we'll get there eventually. But automation, we automate everything, absolutely everything we can. The only time we don't automate something is when it sacrifices accuracy. And so that's just a, a tenant that EdgeCan has grown on. And it's just, it's a really, really important thing because we see so much about like automated pen testing and all this type of stuff. And if you're automating it and you're trying to get an exploit to work, it's just vulnerability scanning. That, that, that's the way it works. Pen testing requires a human and a human has to go, well, I'm going to try misuse this technology. And that's really how the, the pen testing side of it works. But we, we are real keen in keeping humans in the mix as, as, as long as we can anyway. Uh, continuous monitoring, everything needs to happen continuously nowadays. We're, we're gone past the days where an annual pen test was, was, was okay. It'll still tick a box for cyber insurance, it'll still tick a box for your, most of your own customers, but the reality is people need to be moving towards asking, why can't we move towards a continuous model instead of this, uh, even monthly is, is, is better than annual, but it's just move towards a more continuous model. And 
Retesting, everything we do includes retesting. And the reason we do that is because if you've ever scoped out a pen test and someone's turned around to you and said, oh, it's gonna be 10 days or 15 days if you wanna include retesting. And that just really grinds, grinded our gears. So we needed to create a system where people could do retesting as much as they want in a free format from pen testing results. So that, that's a really important element of what we do. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much more on this. I, I am kind of getting crunched a little bit on time, but there's a, there's a few things that we are a little different about, or we like to think we're a little different about anyway. And one of them is the when we're really good at EASM, vulnerability scanning and pen testing. We're, we're okay at all the other things, and we're very honest and upfront about that because when when we uh, start working with somebody, we want to look at it as a long-term relationship. We look at it like in decades instead of in the, okay, well, let's see if we can get 12 months out of them. Uh, that's like, you, you won't be successful in EdgeCan if you think like that, and that's not how we think. And it's really important for us because this is an analogy that worked well earlier with somebody, but uh, they said, uh, or I said it was the cyber industry today is like the medical industry 100 years ago. It's so immature. 100 years ago, if you broke your leg, you went to a healer. If you had a rash, you went to a healer. If you had a pain in your head, you went to a healer. Today, if you break your leg, you go to your emergency services. If you have a rash, you go to your dermatologist. If you have a dodgy ticker, you go to a cardiologist. It's about specialization and just Consolidation will not work as a solution for you if you go with people who just say they are catch-alls and don't tell you where they're not very good. And that's something that a lot of people seem to underlook. And they get caught up with either a relationship or good marketing or something with a particular vendor where they're like, okay, we're going to trust these guys to do this for us. And they're probably not going to do the job exactly the way you expect them to do. And you just need to be really careful of that if you're going to trust them to do uh, or to support basically a foundational pillar of your cybersecurity industry, of your cybersecurity program. So you need to be really particular on that. So that, that's the last bit. So my closing bit here is what do we do? We also understand, and this is a real frustration of all of ours, is we don't need to be the single pane of glass that you look at every single day. We do not need to be that. We understand you need to get this data in a format that your people are used to looking at, so you can just pull it into whatever system you want. We, we don't care, we'll build, we'll build the integration for you. As in, it's, we, we understand that there's a lot of pain in introducing a new technology, lifting a new technology in, and we're here to help on that, because it's not just you, there's lots of other people that need that as well, and we, we're okay with that. So that's a, a really important way on how we think. And so, yeah, here's some of the stuff that we uh, integrate with out of the box. But uh, that's about all I got. I'm not going to keep you too much longer. Uh, thank you so much for today. And if you have any questions, if you want the slides, just email me uh, or come up to us. We're at number 15 and ask as many questions as you want. Uh, we've got a good team of guys up here. All the, the UK team are here anyway, so it's great. But uh, look, thank you very much, everybody, and appreciate your time and attention.